Okay, three, two, one. Oh my goodness. Good morning, good afternoon. Whatever it is for you, I hope you're having a fantastic day. My name is Zach Schaumler. This is Strong Opinion Sports. Thank you so very much for tuning in. Today is Friday, October 5th. We will be for another two and a half hours. Um, God, it's been a hard week. It's been a really, really tough week for me. I've personally just struggled a ton. Um, school's getting to me. Like, I, I just, I, I really don't like college. I don't like my classes. It's been midterm week. And, um... I just got to press on and keep fighting, I guess. Um, I don't know. I, I want to start with this. Um, I do this weird thing about every five months. I wouldn't even call it weird. It's just it's who I am. I've learned to accept that's who I am. About every five months, I get into a very severe funk. I can't explain it. I don't know exactly why. I get depressed. I get sad. I get useless. Um, I'm just not myself. It's a weird, bizarre thing. Um, but what I've done is I've learned to expect it. Now, every, about every five, six months, I'm okay. This is just what happens to me. It's weird. I get in a down funk and I, I go through it and I got to press on and get through this. You know, I, I, I weather it. I sleep. I lay in bed. I try to lay low and, and get my head right. And eventually it always passes. I go through a, a tough time and it always goes away. And since I expect it, it doesn't surprise me anymore. I've come to go, this is just how it is. This is the way it works for me. The New England Patriots are the exact same way. The Patriots are just like my weird every five month depression. For the third year in a row, people have told me, oh no, the Patriots, they're not good enough. It's not going to work. This year is different. The Patriots this year, the Patriots have no wide receivers. Tom Brady's getting old. The defense isn't very good. Nah, nah, nah. It's the same old story every year. For like three years in a row now, people have told me the Patriots this year is different. The Patriots just aren't the same team. And no, I've learned. I've learned by now. No, the Patriots are fine. Well, on Sunday, the Patriots decimated the Dolphins 38-7. to And then four days later on, Monday, on Thursday Night Football, the Patriots beat the Colts 38-24. to The Patriots are fine. The Patriots are fine. They're 3-2, and two, and we've now seen a learned behavior. They struggle. It looks ugly, but they always get better as the year goes on. I mean, Julian Edelman is back from suspension. The defense is five games in. They have five games of experience under their belt. They'll get even better by week 13. They added Josh Gordon. Josh Gordon's going to work into the system. He'll be better by week 13. The Patriots do this every single year. You understand that, right? And at some point, we need to catch up. We need to start expecting the Patriots to look better and better as the year goes on. We should stop being shocked. Everyone's like, oh, wow, the Patriots' magical transformation. They're no. Hello? Expect it. The Patriots do this every single year. It, look, it looks ugly. They struggle. I mean, last year, the Chiefs killed the Patriots week one. And everybody bailed. The Chiefs, I think they beat the Patriots like 42 to like, I think it was like 18 or 20, some random. It was, like a, it was a big number. And I remember everyone was like, oh, no, this is the year. Patriots are screwed. They're not going to make it. Patriots went to the Super Bowl. <laughs> I mean... How about two years ago, Tom Brady was suspended for four games, and everyone told me, be wary, the Patriots are off this year. Tom Brady's got a suspension. They're not going to be very good. Uh, they went 3-1 and one without Tom Brady, finished 14-2, and two and won the Super Bowl. So, I don't know. I'm really kind of over the whole story that this year the Patriots are going to suck. Can we stop? Can we, can we stop having this narrative every year? Until the Patriots give us a reason not to believe in them until there's and not just a reason I mean they've had plenty of reasons not to believe in them I mean their quarterback's 41 years old that's enough already but until they're 0 and 8 until they're 3 and 7 until they are it is so bad they can't come back can we stop doubting the Patriots the Patriots have given us lots of reasons to doubt them but what we've learned over the years is Tom Brady defies all logic and over the years, the Patriots might struggle early. It might look ugly. Their roster is not full of amazing, talented players. But coaching matters. They always clean it up and get better. And by week 13, the Patriots are a different team than they were week one. We've seen it year in and year out. So about every five months, again, I expect myself to have, I just get in a weird funk. I can't explain it. Don't know why. But I just, I know the weather, it, it'll pass. And it always does. Happened to me this week. I struggled. And I've now learned, oh, the Patriots every year, they might open up the year looking kind of ugly, kind of rough. 
But by week six, by week 13, they're a different team. And they could still make it to the Super Bowl. No matter, literally, no matter what happens to them. I mean, remember, the Patriots are in a weak division. Two rookie quarterbacks, Ryan Tannehill. They just smacked the Dolphins 38-7. to Their defense is going to continue to improve. Josh Gordon's going to get better. The Patriots will be fine. And the Patriots are just fine. All right, we have a great show. We have a great show. I think a, a solid show, a shorter show. I don't want to waste your time. I, I respect you guys. Um, I, I want to be very respectful of your time. I don't want to make a show just to make it. If I don't have a lot to say, I'm not going to just sit here and blabber about nothing. I think that gets nobody. I mean, look, there's there are so many sports shows out there, um, and I want to not make crap. I want to make good content worth listening to. Um, I, I just I had a really busy week. I'll be honest. I'm not... I, I really wanted to catch up on baseball. I wanted to see what's going on in the world of baseball because in October, I finally start to engage in baseball. And uh, I, haven't, I haven't had the time to sit down and look at what are the narratives of baseball right now. I just, I haven't had time. I've had midterms this week. It's kind of disappointing to me. I have the weekend free. There's no home football game this weekend. Don't have to work for Pac-12 Network. That's great. I'll get a lot of stuff done in the sports world, but I'm a little bit behind and I'm okay with that. Um, I know from what I, very little I've looked at baseball. I would love to see the Red Sox and the Dodgers in the World Series. That's the World Series I'm rooting for personally. It's two big cities, two historically big franchises, the Red Sox and the Dodgers. That would be cool. Um, but we have a few good things I want to talk about today. C.J. Beathard, the 49ers backup quarterback, might be better than Jimmy Garoppolo. Interesting. Very interesting. I watched that whole 49ers game. We'll talk about that down the road. I will talk about the two most interesting games of the week coming up uh, This in week four, of the end of four or five, depending on which week it is for you. Um, we have a lot more football to talk about. I'm going to talk about a story that I found quite compelling and really mattered to me. It's very interesting. Um, and then at the end of the show, we're going to do pick six, which is I pick, I guess it's week five in the NFL. I should have clarified that. It is week five, no matter what time zone you're in, no matter what part of the country you're in, whether you're in Bangladesh, in Brazil, or New York, it's week five of the NFL. Got it. My brain's all scattered. Um, and so I'm going to pick six games. I do this every Friday. I pick six games from Sunday. Who's going to win? Who's going to lose? And I tell you why. Um, and so with that, I want to say, remember, you can subscribe to Strong Opinion Sports on iTunes, on SoundCloud, and on YouTube. You can find the full entire hour-long podcast on YouTube, as well as my best, most interesting clips. If you like Strong Opinion Sports, please help me grow by telling your friends about this show. Share it on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, whatever it is. Help me grow by telling your friends about the show. It means a lot to me. You know, I put my heart and soul into this show, um, and I would love to do this as my full-time job someday. So please we're growing like quite quickly. It surprises me every time. Every time I look at the numbers, I'm like, oh, we're still growing. Like, all right. Um, but I would love to do this show live on Twitch someday. That's kind of a dream of mine. I, I have a lot of aspirations, a lot of stuff I want to do that I just can't because I'm a full-time student and I, I, this is not my full-time job yet. And if it ever gets there, I have a lot of plans. I want to have some cool guests on the show every week. I want to do more. I love to hire an editor. There's a lot of stuff I want to do, but I can't do that without you guys. So continue to help me grow by telling your friends about the show. Only if you like it. If you hate the show, then I don't know why you're watching, but I don't know. Whatever. Um, there are two really, really fantastic football games this week in the NFL. The first one to me is the Jaguars and the Chiefs. The Jaguars and the Chiefs are playing in Kansas City. It is fantastic. Remember, what I do is I call these snake charmer games. You ever seen a snake charmer? It will charm a snake. It'll, it'll work some magic, and the snake will, it gets entranced. And when I watch certain games, I get entranced. I get charmed by the game i can't take my eyes off of it so these are my snake charmer games the first one again is the jaguars at the chiefs on sunday uh there are two matchups i think are really interesting in this game one is blake bortles versus the chiefs defense and the other one is patrick mahomes the chiefs quarterback against the jaguars defense first i want to talk about blake bortles blake bortles should he should shred the chiefs defense on sunday the Chiefs' defense is not very good. Remember, Blake Bortles, and took, he just tore apart the Patriots a couple weeks ago, um, and the Chiefs' defense is even worse. The Chiefs' defense have given up 451 yards per game. They are last in the NFL as far as yards. They're averaging, they're 28th in the NFL for rush yards per game, giving up 123. They're 31st in pass yards per game, 328. And they're giving up 28.8 points per game, which is 25th in the NFL. Basically, the, the point is, the Kansas City Chiefs defense gives up a ton of yards. You can run on them. You can throw on them. They're going to give up a lot of points. They're not very good. I think the Jags are going to 
more than just move the ball. They're going to score a lot of points. I have complete faith that Blake Bortles is going to pick apart the Kansas City Chiefs defense. Unless Blake Bortles completely implodes, I would be shocked if he had a bad game. I, there's no way. I just don't see it happening. Now, Patrick Mahomes versus the Jaguars defense might be even more interesting. If Blake Bortles shows up with a pulse, he's gonna he, he should really pick apart the Chiefs defense. Patrick Mahomes, I have no idea what's going to happen. The Jaguars have one of the best defenses in the NFL. I think they're ranked number one, I, I, something like that. Uh, but Patrick Mahomes, that's the matchup I want to watch. He will not be perfect. Patrick Mahomes has 14 touchdowns, zero interceptions so far this year. I, I don't know that that's going to continue. I think that no interception stretch is going to end. This is probably the week Patrick Mahomes throws his first NFL interception. So, excuse me, his first interception of the 2018 season. That's how I mean to say that. If Mahomes shredded the Jaguars, I, I would be shocked. I'd be so surprised. I, I hope, personally, I'll be honest, I'm rooting for Patrick Mahomes. I would like to see Patrick Mahomes shred the Jaguars. I like him. He's a good story. It's good for the NFL if he's dominating. But I'd be very surprised. And I'm actually picking the Jaguars to win this game. I, I think Blake Bortles is going to keep up very well with Patrick Mahomes because the Chiefs defense isn't very good. I mean, they, they should have lost to Case Keenum last week. And who, that's a toss-up. Case Keenum, Blake Bortles, I don't know. I know the Chiefs have, sorry, the Jaguars have better offensive personnel than the Jaguars than the Broncos do. Um, I could see the Jaguars very easily winning this game. And I'm wondering, is all of Patrick Mahomes' success? At some point, he's got to stumble. At some point, Patrick Mahomes has to have a bad game or has to have a game that's off. This is probably, if there's going to be any game this year that Patrick Mahomes is going to struggle, it's against the Jaguars' defense. They're fantastic. And so I'm, I'm picking the Jaguars to beat the Chiefs, and it's very interesting. I, honestly, it's a toss-up, but I think Patrick Mahomes is simply due to have a bad game. He's 14 touchdowns, no interceptions. The Chiefs are 4-0. I think they're likely to walk out of this game 4-1, and and they'll be okay. I mean, Patrick Mahomes is going to struggle. He's had an incredible start to his season. I, I wouldn't panic. If the Jaguars beat the Chiefs, I would not panic if I'm a Chiefs fan. Now, my second most interesting game of the week is the Vikings at the Eagles. The Vikings are going back to Philadelphia, where they got annihilated last year in the playoffs. So in big games, the Vikings are 0-1-1. They have one loss and a tie. They have not won one of their big games this year. I think it's very interesting. This is the first time the Vikings are going back to Philadelphia since losing last year in the playoffs. Remember, they got annihilated in the NFC Championship game. The difference is the Vikings now have a new quarterback, Kirk Cousins. They invested a lot of money. They said, we're bringing in Kirk Cousins because he's better than Case Keenum and he can be the difference so we can win big games like this. I think this is a must-win game for the Vikings, and I don't know what to expect from the Eagles. Remember, Carson Wentz is coming off of an ACL injury. Carson Wentz was out for the entire rest of the year last year after losing, tearing his ACL against the Rams. I watched that. It was, it was a goal line play. It was rough. Um, and Carson Wentz, since returning from his injury, simply has not looked 100%. He has not gotten back to that same level he was at the end of last year before he got hurt. Maybe this is the game, though, where he finds his rhythm. That's the wild card factor in this game, is Carson Wentz. If Carson Wentz plays like the MVP candidate he was last year, the Eagles are going to win this game. If Carson Wentz is not 100%, then the Vikings have a chance. And I do think the Vikings are better than people give them credit for. Remember, they, they were step for step with the Rams last week on Thursday Night Football. Yes, they slipped up against the Buffalo Bills. I don't fault them for that. I don't know that they were in the right headspace for that game. Remember, they had some stuff off the field. I think they were looking ahead to the Rams. But I'm leaning Vikings. I'm quite cautious in this game. I'm going to go with the Vikings. I think the Vikings are going to win. Um, but I think it's a very fascinating game. It's a game I'm not going to be able to get my eyes off of. Vikings versus Eagles in Philadelphia is a huge game. I recommend you watch I can't wait to talk about it next week. It will be probably the lead of the show. Um, and I'm very, very excited to see what happens on Sunday in Philadelphia. Let's shift our attention to the San Francisco 49ers. I'm going to drink some water real quick. I know you guys love when I pause for water. <clears throat> so in week four of the NFL season, the San Francisco 49ers lost to the LA Chargers 27-29. I watched every snap. I have NFL Game Pass. It was very interesting. I learned a I learned a lot. It was it was a it was a confusing game to watch. It gave me very mixed um, mixed feelings. I want to make a statement that, that might be controversial, but I think I really believe 
in my opinion, the best performance from a quarterback by the San Francisco 49ers has come from C.J. Beathard, the backup, not Jimmy Garoppolo. Another way of saying that is, I think C.J. Beathard, the backup quarterback, outplayed Jimmy Garoppolo on Sunday. I mean, if you forget looks, if you forget the big contract and you just look at it objectively, C.J. Beathard outplayed Jimmy Garoppolo. Remember, Jimmy Garoppolo is the 49ers starting quarterback. He tore his ACL. He's out for the year. And I would say that Jimmy Garoppolo's play before his injury was actually disappointing. Remember, he really wasn't great. He got hurt. It sucks. Um, I don't want to... I know he's kind of San Francisco's hero. I don't want to crap on the 49ers star quarterback that got hurt, but he had a 59% completion percentage. 59%. The barrier in the NFL is 60. He hadn't met that yet. He had five touchdowns, three interceptions. He should have had four interceptions. If you remember against the Detroit Lions... In week two, Jimmy Garoppolo threw the interception that would have cost the 49ers the game. It should have cost the 49ers the game, but it got called back because of a defensive holding not near the play. Um, I don't know. That that has left a bad taste in my mouth for a long time, but that's not the only reason I wanna, I'm want to. i concerned about Jimmy Garoppolo and why I'm, I'm not just, hmm, I don't know how to put this. The simple way to put it is Jimmy Garoppolo held the ball too long. He was indecisive. He would hold the ball for seven Eight seconds. You cannot do that and expect to be successful in the NFL. I mean, the barrier was pretty low for C.J. Beathard. He didn't have to do a lot to do better than Jimmy Garoppolo. Again, I don't mean to crap on the 49ers hero, uh, but C.J. Beathard simply made fewer mistakes than Jimmy Garoppolo did on Sunday. Who knows if C.J. Beathard's going to keep it up? Um, and I'm not saying the guy played great. And it's worth noting... Beathard had two chances to drive the 49ers down the field and take the lead. But it also, there were some mistakes the 49ers made that should have won the game. If you remember, he had two interceptions late in the game. Uh, one of them was on the goal line. CJ Beathard throws a, a perfect pass, a very highly catchable pass. It hits a receiver in the hands, bounces up, is picked off on the goal line, taken back for a huge gain. If that had not been intercepted, even if the drive stalls, even if they don't score a touchdown on that drive, they could have kicked a field goal. The game would have ended 30-29. to 29. The 49ers would have won. They, that loss was largely on that wide receiver. But forget that for a minute. There was also another interception late in the game. Final drive for the 49ers. C.J. Beathard got hit as he threw from behind. And that was a complete breakdown in the offensive line. That was horrible blocking. Right as he hits his third step, he sets the throw. You should have enough time to take to take a three-step drop and throw the ball without getting hit. The fact that a free rusher came from the left, hit him behind, and forced that interception, that's not acceptable. That's the offensive line's fault, not the defense. C.J. Beathard was incredibly safe on Sunday, but he was also decisive. There was a third down play, a third and two, where I thought he had a window over the middle. He didn't force it. He rolled. He kept rolling, eventually threw the ball away. And I remember in my notes I wrote down, that was a safe play. But he didn't make, he didn't, what he didn't do is hold on the ball too long. C.J. Beathard got the ball out incredibly quick, much faster than Jimmy Garoppolo did. He did not take a lot of sacks that Jimmy Garoppolo probably would have taken. And he was incredibly accurate down the middle of the field. C.J. Beathard does not have the biggest arm in the world. He's not an incredibly, bre like you watch Patrick Mahomes, that's a breathtakingly huge arm. Josh Allen has a huge arm. C.J. Beathard has an average arm, kind of a boring arm. In fact, he's kind of a boring player. He's got a beard. He's not incredibly good looking. He doesn't have a huge contract. But if you remove Jimmy Garoppolo's looks, if you take away Jimmy Garoppolo's huge contract, if they're on a level playing field, what's the narrative right now in San Francisco? They're asking questions about Jimmy Garoppolo. The reason why the 49ers fans are committed to Jimmy Garoppolo is because of his contract. If we look at it objectively, you can make a great, great argument that C.J. Beathard might be a better quarterback right now than Jimmy Garoppolo played this year. I don't know how to explain that five-game run last year, but his start to 2018 was not acceptable. Jimmy Garoppolo's. It was not good. It was not encouraging. Um, and, and the fact that C.J. Beathard looks better than Jimmy Garoppolo after just one game, all that really does is said a lot about Jimmy Garoppolo. It spoke to how... I think disappointing Jimmy Garoppolo played in the first couple weeks of the season. C.J. Beathard was boring, but he was also consistent. He didn't hold on to the ball too long. He didn't take bad sacks. He didn't force the ball into windows that weren't there. He had two interceptions. Neither were really his fault. 
I don't know. He had numerous drops. The 49ers were terrible at the offensive line. They had bad protection. Frequently, guys would come free at C.J. Beathard. That's not his fault. And yet, despite the things that worked against C.J. Beathard, he executed the offense. He put them in a position to almost win the game. 27-29. And if that hit, ball doesn't get tipped to the goal line, they win the game. I don't know. I don't know. I, I'm very interested in watching C.J. Beathard the rest of this year. The 49ers play the Cardinals this week. The Cardinals are starting their rookie quarterback, Josh Rosen. I think the 49ers are not only going to win the game, but I think they should win the game. C.J. Beathard's a better quarterback than people realize. Um, and I'm very, very fascinated in this story. Again, remove the emotional bias. Remove your emotional connection to Jimmy Garoppolo. Forget about Jimmy Garoppolo's good looks. Forget about the $137.5 million contract he has. If you look at it objectively, C.J. Beathard against the Chargers looked better in one game than Jimmy Garoppolo has in his entire 2018 season. I don't know. That's a red flag to me. That's concerning to me. I like Jimmy Garoppolo. I want him to succeed. I, I want the 49ers more than anything to have a franchise quarterback. But C.J. Beathard, he's boring, but he played better than Jimmy Garoppolo did. My opinion, that's the show. All right. I've gotten the comment from a number. I, mm, I want to repeat that statement. I've gotten a comment a number of times. Um, the question that people often ask me is, should the 49ers fire their defensive coordinator, Robert Sala? The, question to that is, the answer to that is no. The 49ers should not fire their defensive coordinator. But the question often continues. People ask, should the 49ers switch from a 4-3 defense back to a 3-4? Four down linemen, should we go back to three down linemen? Again, no. Well, let me ask you a question. Are the 49ers committed to change? What you don't do, you don't understand how difficult it is to change from a 4-3, from a 3-4 defense the 49ers formerly were to a 4-3 defense. So Robert Sala was hired in February 2017. He is halfway through his second season in the NFL as a defensive coordinator. And right now, the 49ers defense is ranked 18th overall in the NFL, which is fine. It's not great. It's also not terrible. Middle of the pack, serviceable. That's good enough. Especially when you have a quarterback, Jimmy Garoppolo, who wasn't playing outstanding. But that's not even why you don't fire Robert Sala. That's not even why... The 49ers should not fire their defensive coordinator. Fans often do not understand patience. Patience is a simple concept. You don't bring a guy in only to fire him a year and a half into building something. A year and a half, that'd be simply silly. Robert Sala has not had enough time to make good enough judgment. And remember, I want to point out once again, changing from a 3-4 defense to a 4-3 defense is a big change. Why would you even bother to make that change if you're not going to commit to it? Why would you have hired Robert Sala if you're only going to give him a year and a half and then fire him out? Or even two years. At the end of this year, he should not be fired. He's doing a good job. He's building something. He's got a lot of bad players. He's working on something. A complete shift in philosophy takes time. Patience. I know a lot of fans don't understand that. Um, but you, it requires different players to shift a complete philosophical difference on defense. To go from a 3-4 to a 4-3 means you have different body types at linebacker. You have four down linemen, which is two true defensive ends and two defensive tackles. It's a big change. And I would ask you, if you're going to bail so quickly, what was the point of the change in the first place? That is why the 49ers should not fire their defensive coordinator. If they weren't willing to commit to that, they should have never done it in the first place. If you were going to hire Robert Sala, if you were going to willing to change the defense, you got to give him enough time to actually make a change, to actually make something happen. If you're going to fire him now, it would have been a pointless last year and a half. It would have been pointless to ever make that change, and I would be very, very much against it. So no, the 49ers should not fire their defensive coordinator, Robert Sala. Okay. <clears throat> I think the Tennessee Titans deserve some recognition. Uh, they have this new head coach, Mike Vrabel. He's impressive. He's doing a good job. Um, I, I want to give the give an applause to the Titans. They're three and one right now. Um, they beat the Jaguars. They beat the Super Bowl defending Super Bowl champion Eagles. 
Last week, they beat them 26 to 23 in overtime. I remember watching that celebration. I was excited. I was happy for the Titans. And this week, the Titans play the Buffalo Bills. I mean, it's it's very, it looks like the Titans are going to start the season 4-1. and one, Completely defying my expectations. I did not expect a lot from the Titans. I was wrong. I'll admit it. Hey, Titans fans, I'm sorry. <laughs> Can you forgive me? I apologize. Um, and if you look at the Titans division, I mean, the Jaguars are a really good team. I think the Jaguars are a Super Bowl contender. But that does not mean the Titans could not still make the playoffs. The Texans are down. The Texans right now are 1-3. and three. They should be 0-3-1 oh, and one if the Colts didn't have that foobar they did last week. The Colts are coming along, but they're not 100%. Andrew Luck is not 100%. I'd, I'll give him until November. And I don't think the Colts are going to make the playoffs this year. Um, I don't know. I think the Titans are a playoff contender. They have a very real defense. And I remember I was confused in the 2017 draft when the Titans picked, with the fifth overall pick, they picked a wide receiver, Corey Davis. He's from Western Michigan. I was like, why, why would you make that pick? I, I know he's a physical specimen, but I, I just was surprised by that. And until now, he's been kind of a, honestly, a bust. He was not great last year. Um, he had his first breakout game last year week against the Eagles. It was awesome. He had nine catches, a touchdown, 161 yards. Finally, Corey Davis is coming along. And if you look at Marcus Mariota, um, I don't know. Marcus Mariota's been banged up. He's not had great years. In fact, last year had more interceptions than touchdowns. But we forget, even though Marcus Mariota is in his fourth year in the league, the guy's only 24 years old. I mean, he's a young buck. He's a young kid still developing. I don't know. I don't, I don't know what to make of Marcus Mariota. I think it's very possible he holds back the Titans long term. There are some people saying, you know, it's one thing to say the Titans are a playoff contender. It's another thing I'm seeing some people say, the Titans are a Super Bowl contender. And that's a different story altogether. Making the playoffs and winning a Super Bowl or getting to a Super Bowl are vastly different goals. Uh, right now, Marcus Mariota has two touchdowns, three interceptions. Did not have a touchdown until last week. I don't know. The quarterback concerns me for the Titans, but everything else the Titans are doing is incredibly, incredibly effective and incredibly impressive. Um, and it's worth noting, I mean, Nick Foles won a Super Bowl. Who would have who would have saw that coming? And Rex Grossman even made it to a Super Bowl. So maybe Marcus Mariota is good enough. I don't know. I'm 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 just I'm in, intrigued by the Titans. I don't know what to make of them yet. And I don't know if they keep it up. They've been winning games with low scoring and defense. I don't know if they keep that up all year, but I'm very interested to see. I don't know what's gonna happen. But put the Titans in the back of your mind. They should be on your radar. At the very least. They're a team that's in playoff contention that I did not think was going to be. And they're worth watching because they're doing a lot of good stuff. They're playing very technically sound football and they look well coached. So I don't know. Put the Titans on your radar. If you're not a Titan fan, I know sure Titans are like, yeah, you should have paid attention to us. But if you're not a Titans fan, start paying attention because what they're doing on the field, aside from quarterback play, defense, special teams, offensive line play, they look like a solid team that's playing good football. So I'm curious to see how they develop. Let's stay on a, do we trust teams? Do we not trust teams? Um, the Bengals are three and one and the Browns in contrast are one and three. I think that the Browns are better than people realize they're better than their record shows. I think the Bengals are worse than their record shows. Um, I don't trust the Bengals. I don't. I wish I did. I think it'd be a great story if they turned it around. They're three and one. That's incredibly encouraging. Um, and if you look last week, Andy Dalton played great. Andy Dalton had three touchdowns in Atlanta against the Falcons. Huge. It was awesome. It was indoors, which is kind of a caveat. But two weeks ago, Andy Dalton had four interceptions against Carolina. So the Bengals are three and one, but I, I don't, that's not okay to me. You can't, your quarterback can't have four interceptions. Tom Brady doesn't do that. I don't know a lot of quarterbacks that are, potential playoff teams that would do that. Andy Dalton can't have games like that. And for that reason, I'm out. I don't trust the Bengals. I wish I did. I, I hope I'm wrong. The Bengals are a great story. It'd be so cool if they made the playoffs and won their division. I, I'd be very happy for them. Uh, but when it comes down to their division, the Ravens or the Bengals, I pick the Ravens. I just, I don't trust Andy Dalton. Year in and year out, he's let me down in big moments. And the Browns, in contrast, the Browns are one and three. Bengals are 3-1, Browns are 1-3. I think the 
Browns are better than their record shows. I think the Browns should be 4-0, quite frankly. I mean, they should have won their first two weeks. They had the no kicker. They struggled. They beat the Jets week three, and last week they went to overtime with the Raiders. I think they should have won that game as well. So I think, you know, the Bengals are 3-1. I think they're overrated. I think the Browns are 1-3. and three. They're underrated. I think the Browns are better than people realize. So I'm very interested to see what happens. I think the AFC North might be the most fascinating division in football because I have no idea what's going to happen. The Steelers traditionally win that division. They're a mess. They're 1-2-1, one and they're one, two and one, two and one, I believe. They're a mess. They're not great. And the Ravens, I think, are the favorite, but I don't really know what to make of that. The Bengals are 3-1. and one. That's impressive. They beat the Ravens, which is weird. The Ravens like didn't show up to play. And the Browns historically are the worst team in the NFL. A year in and year out recently, they're awful. And they're one and three. They should be four and oh. I mean, and they have a new quarterback. I have no idea what to make of the AFC North. I think we'll know we'll have a better idea week ten or week eight. But I, I frankly, I'm just curious to see what happens. I have no idea. And and I'm very excited to see how that division develops because I don't know what's going to happen. I legitimately, I don't know which team is going to win that division. It seems like every single one of the Dose teams in that division, from the Steelers, the Ravens, the Bengals, or the Browns, it seems like every single one of those teams is capable, has the talent to win their division. I don't know who's going to do it. I'm betting the Ravens, but man, I don't know. And I'm very fascinated to see what happens down the road. We have three things left. I want to do three topics. Um, I want to share a story that hit my heart, made me happy, made me really proud. It was cool. It was fun to watch. Um, last Saturday, Aesop Winston Jr. had the game-winning touchdown for Washington State University. Um, he helped his team beat Utah. And after the game, I was actually filming interviews for the Pac-12 Network. Um, I was on set when this happened. Aesop Winston Jr. said this. And to be here is like a dream come true, man. That's why I'm so speechless. Like, I worked so hard to get here, man. I, I was at Juke, junior college for three years. I gray shirted, played two years, didn't get offered here till late. And it was just like, goodness, like, it's taking so long. But, man, to be here and be with this beautiful, with this beautiful, <laughs> I, I can't. And so, man, I was there live when that happened, and it just touched me. I was like, that is such a cool story. That story of perseverance. I mean, three years in junior college, people don't realize – how difficult that is. You got to pay in California. He was at city college of San Francisco. You got to pay for rent. They don't give you a scholarship in California. That's a tough life. And that guy to go from city college of San Francisco, a junior college in that city to go from there to now be tied for the second most touchdowns as a receiver in the pack 12 ES five. I'm so happy for that guy. That's so cool. The, the story of Continuing to believe in yourself, despite the odds, despite, you know, three years in junior college is incredibly grueling. Aesop Winston Jr., I just, I, I'm so impressed and uh, inspired by that story. I, I struggle. I, I am a guy who, um, I have dreams. I want to get there somewhere someday, and that's, um, it's hard to believe in yourself. It's hard to keep going. And so when I heard that quote from Aesop Winston Jr., I just was so um, overjoyed. I was happy for him. I was inspired listening to it, and I just thought it was a cool story. I had to share with somebody, and what a be what better place to do it than on my sports podcast? So I just I, I wanted to share. That was an incredibly moving story to me. I, I, I'm very much rooting for Aesop Winston Jr., and uh, I hope he makes it, man. I just, wow. Wow, I thought that was really cool. Uh, there was a play last week. I cannot find a good clip of it. Um, it's Washington State University versus Utah. I've been talking about Gardner Minshew often on this show. He's the Washington State quarterback. Um, I think he is criminally underrated. He's much better than people realize. It's partially because he's up in the Pacific Northwest. No one cares about those teams. He's a Pac-12 school, which makes it even worse. I mean, people in the South, let's be honest, nobody cares about Washington State University. They're not a nationally interesting team. They're not a team that you care about nationally. Um, and he, you know, I, I think last week I ranked him in the top five NFL quarterback prospects. I believe I went overboard. He's not a top five talent. He doesn't have elite arm talent. I wish he did. His arm strength just isn't there. Um, but there's a play versus Utah. He threw a long touchdown to Desmond Patton that I, I wanted to talk about because people often say, you know, this guy's a playmaker. Lamar Jackson, for example, is a playmaker with his feet. He runs around and makes things happen with his feet. 
or guys like Patrick Mahomes, they're playmakers with their arms. They just have a better arm than you. And it doesn't matter if you're 80 yards away, beat your man by a step. I can always make that throw. Patrick Mahomes has an arm that makes plays. Gardner Minshew is unique. Gardner Minshew, the Washington State quarterback, is a very different style of player. He's a playmaker with his eyes and with his shoulders. It's rare to find that. Most guys run around and make plays. Most guys make plays by having incredible arms that no one else can, they make throws no one else can make. Gardner Minshew manipulates defenses with his eyes and with his shoulders. And there was a play, that play, that touchdown to Desmond Patton against Utah last week. I thought it was worth mentioning because that was a key example. Like, it's really hard to find footage of Pac-12 schools. They don't put stuff online. But that play by Gardner Minshew, he, he manipulated the safety, moved his shoulder, got Desmond Patton wide open on a post. That was an incredibly impressive play, putting the ball over the linebackers, moving the safety with his eyes and with his shoulders. That's why I think he has some NFL talent. I don't know that he's a starter. I don't know that he's a, even a draft. He's probably an undrafted free agent because of his arm strength. But um, he's got better arm strength than Joe Burrow. I think he's comparable to Jarrett Stidham. And I think w what he does, moving within the pocket and manipulating defenses with his eyes and with his shoulders, nobody does it better. Um, and I think he's really a criminally underrated potential NFL quarterback. Pay attention to Gardner Minshew, the quarterback out of Washington State. What he does, reading defenses, making good decisions, and manipulating defenses with his eyes and with his shoulders. Not... I don't know that anybody else in college football is doing it as well as he is. I think Justin Herbert at Oregon's close, if not better. But Drew Locke? Drew Locke's not doing what Gardner Minshew's doing. Worth noting. Pay attention to Gardner Minshew, the Washington State quarterback. I'm not a homer. I go to school there. I don't even like it. I don't even like my college. So I'm not a, you know, I'm not, I'm not a homer. I'm just, I watch this guy often, and I'm incredibly impressed. I think he's better than their former quarterback, Luke Falk. And I don't say that lightly. Gardner Minshew's the real deal. He's better than people realize. Okay, final thing I want to do all day. Let's do pick six. I do this every week. I pick six games in the NFL this week. I break down who's going to win and why. My first game of the week is the Falcons at the Steelers. I'm picking the Steelers for a couple of reasons. First of all, the Falcons are banged up. They have a ton of injuries. I think this game, Falcons-Steelers, it's incredibly competitive. It's going to be close. I think Matt Ryan's better than people realize. Um, but here's my take. I think the Steelers are just a different team at home. They have an emotional swing when they play games in Pittsburgh. Often on the road, they're disorganized. I think the Pittsburgh Steelers are a better team this week. They're going to beat the Falcons at home. The Cowboys travel to Houston to play the Texans. It's a super long drive. Maybe they'll fly. I don't know. <laughs> I'm kidding. Um, I'm picking the Cowboys to beat the Texans. Here's why. The Texans' offensive line is not good enough. Have you ever heard of the name Demarcus Lawrence? Demarcus Lawrence is a defensive end for the Cowboys. He has five and a half sacks in just four games this year. It's likely against the Texans that guy's going to get even more sacks. My question is, can Deshaun Watson, the Texans quarterback, can he evade Demarcus Lawrence? I don't think so. I'm picking the Cowboys to beat the Texans. And the Jaguars travel to Kansas City to play the Chiefs. I'm picking the Jaguars to win. There are two matchups in this game that are interesting to watch. It's Patrick Mahomes versus the Jaguars defense. <clears throat> and I think even more important is Blake Bortles versus the Chiefs defense. I think Blake Bortles is going to shred the Chiefs defense. The Chiefs defense is not very good. And they're terrible. I think, I think Blake Bortles is going to have a field day. Meanwhile, Patrick Mahomes has 14 touchdowns and no interceptions. He is due for a slip up. Personally, I'm rooting for Patrick Mahomes. I hope the Chiefs win. I hope I'm wrong about this. But I'm picking the Jaguars to win. I think Patrick Mahomes is due for a, a subpar day. And I think Blake Bortles is prepared to annihilate the Chiefs' bad defense. They're, you can run against them. You can throw against them. It doesn't matter. They give up the most yards in the NFL. I believe the Jaguars are going to beat the Chiefs on Sunday in Kansas City. Now, the Dolphins travel to Cincinnati to play the Bengals. This is interesting. It's a big game for both teams. Both teams, the Dolphins and the Bengals, are 3-1. and one. They also both have one really concerning loss this year. In, uh, in a Bengals loss against the Carolina Panthers, the Bengals quarterback Andy Dalton threw four interceptions. That's not acceptable. And I don't feel very comfortable having confidence in their quarterback when that happens. Now, the Dolphins' bad loss was they just simply didn't show up to play against the Patriots. 
They got wrecked 38-7 to last week in New England. That's ugly. That's not acceptable. Now, I will say this. I trust the Dolphins more than I trust Andy Dalton. I'm picking the Dolphins to win. I think it's a close game. I think it's very competitive. I think the Dolphins have a better defense. And I, again, I just do not at all trust Andy Dalton, the Bengals quarterback. I'm picking the Dolphins to win. The Vikings go to the Eagles. I'm picking the Vikings to win this game. They just had a tough loss to the Rams, but what people don't realize, it was incredibly competitive. I think the Rams are one of the best teams in the entire NFL, and if the Vikings can keep up the Rams, they can play with anybody. I think the Vikings still have a great team. Now, here's the key, too. The Vikings have had 10 days to prepare for the Eagles. That's a massive advantage. Now, I'm still waiting for Carson Wentz to look 100%. Remember, Carson Wentz is coming off of an injury last year. Uh, maybe he shows up, but Carson Wentz is kind of the wild card in this game. I haven't seen enough from him yet to believe in him. Um, I am picking the Vikings to win. Remember, these teams have history. Last year in the playoffs, the Eagles dominated the Vikings. I think the Vikings come back to Philadelphia, and the Vikings are going to win on Sunday. Last game of the week in pick six, it's the Vikings at the Car- uh, Excuse me, the 49ers at the Cardinals. Between the 49ers and the Cardinals, I'm picking the 49ers. Here's why. The 49ers' backup quarterback, C.J. Beathard, is better than people realize. And uh, the Cardinals are starting a rookie quarterback, Josh Rosen. Who's better, the veteran quarterback? Eh, veteran, two-year veteran, or Josh Rosen? I think C.J. Beathard's a better quarterback. They have a better team. I think the 49ers' defense is going to make a lot of plays against Josh Rosen. I'm picking the 49ers to win against the Cardinals in a dome. Cardinals are at home. Doesn't matter. The 49ers are going to win this game. That has been pick six. Again, the teams I'm picking to win, Steelers are going to win. The Cowboys are going to win. The Jaguars are going to beat the Chiefs. Dolphins are going to beat the Bengals. The Vikings will beat the Eagles. And the 49ers will beat the Cardinals. My name is Zach Schaumler. Thank you so very much for tuning in. I really appreciate you. If you've ever had a tough week, if you've ever struggled, um, just know that I've been there. I understand your pain. Um, I had an incredibly tough week. Uh, It's it's just been brutal for me. I I struggle with depression. I'm a weird guy. I don't know if that's weird to say. I, I don't know. I don't really care. I want to be honest with you guys. I missed Wednesday's show. I don't like doing that. I, I ne- try to never miss a day of this show, um, and I, I just couldn't get going. I apologize. I, I feel bad about it, um, but I, I know who I am, and I know I need to just I need to lay low, get through that mental tough part. It happens about every five months. It's just who I am, and so I apologize to you guys. I don't mean to offend anyone. I'm sure no one's out there going, oh, I'm so mad you didn't make a show because what you want is quality content. So um, I just want to let you know. That's how I felt. I apologize to you guys. I don't like missing a day. But I do believe in making quality content over it's just a bunch of random crap that sucks. So I hope you enjoyed the show. I really appreciate you guys. Remember, you can not subscribe to Strong Opinion Sports on iTunes, on SoundCloud, and on YouTube. You can find the full entire hour-long podcast on YouTube as well as my best, most interesting clips. If you like Strong Opinion Sports, help me grow by telling your friends about the show. Share it on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, whatever it is. Help me grow. I have a lot of dreams and hopes for this show. If you want to help me get there, please tell your friends about this podcast. Share it on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. My name is Zach Schaumler. Thank you so very much for tuning in. I really appreciate you guys. Have a great day. Enjoy all the games this weekend. But um, bum bam We are... Oh, who plays Florida this week? It doesn't matter. Um, There's one more thing. Who plays Florida this week? Florida's going to lose. That's all. All I remember saying, I just remember one thing. It's that Florida, no, LSU is going to beat Florida. That's what it is. Joe Burrow and LSU is going to beat Florida. I can't believe I forgot it. I wanted to say that. I've been wanting to say that all the show. LSU is going to, without a shadow of a doubt, beat Florida on Saturday. But um, bum bam, we are done. Bye.